Good morning, River Church. How are you guys doing today? Uh, my name is Billy. I'm the associate pastor here, and I am extremely excited to be here as always. Uh, we'll get straight to it. Um, so, I, uh, I'm an iPhone guy. I love iPhones, and I can remember, uh, I have an iPhone now, but I can remember when I first started to like iPhones, I did not have an iPhone. I actually had the HTC Evo. Now, this is about 10 years ago, and so I am with Sprint. I've been with Sprint since forever. It's now T-Mobile, but I've been with them for forever. And I remember when the iPhone came out, it was like the coolest, coolest phone to have. Uh, and, and I wanted it. One of, my, one of my good buddies, he had the iPhone. And so it did all these cool tricks. It had all these cool applications. Uh, this phone call option, uh, well, not the phone call, but like the, the text messaging and the FaceTime and, and all of those sorts of things. And it was such a cool, cool phone, right? And, and it, was, it looked different than the other phones, and it was a little bit more advanced than the other phones. And it just looked like a phone that you wanted to have, right? And so I really started to like this phone. And if you guys remember from about 10 years ago, not all of the phone carriers would carry all the phones. And so the phone that, that I wanted, which was the iPhone, I could not have. And so, as, as I said earlier, I, I, was, I, I, I settled on Sprint's equivalent or competition to the iPhone, which was the HTC Evo. And so, uh, but I really wanted the iPhone. And so, finally, the iPhone uh, was uh, uh, introduced to the Sprint network, and people who had Sprint uh, coverage were able to um, get an iPhone, and so what did I do? I got one, right? And uh, I was so excited to have this one. This is actually a, uh, this is the phone, my first iPhone that I got uh, with, with, with Sprint, right? And so, and this is old school, like this, it has the button right here, and it's not even the button that had like the, the fingerprint. It, this is like just the button to unlock the screen, right? Some of y'all are like, Oh my gosh, that phone has a button. Get it away from me. <laughs> um, but it had the button, right? So this is the phone that I had. And this is the phone that I wanted. And again, my friend had one. And it was a super durable phone. Uh, and I was like, man, this phone, I'm going to have this phone. It's going to last me for a long time. I'm just going to love this phone. This phone's going to be great. Right? So my phone was designed to do specific things. And what I quickly, or... or uh, it was designed to do specific things, but now you look at this phone, and it's at my house, and it serves as a paperweight. And so my phone, <clears throat> which was designed to do all these really cool and amazing things, is now not doing what it was designed to do. And so today, we are a lot like this. We have been created to do something, but we are not doing that. And, and I believe that, that we are <clears throat> created to be in community. As humans, as people, we, as we have been created by God, we are created to be in community. Right? At River Church, we've talked about this, one of our distinctives, one of our personalities, one of the things that, that we, uh, uh, if you look at River Church, uh, it will distinguish us. Not necessarily that other churches don't do this, but one thing that you will notice in looking at River Church is seeing that we are a people who prize community. We, we esteem community. We think it's important, and therefore we want to do it. We believe, as I said, we believe that we are created to be in community. Now, community is a Christian, it's, it's a buzzword, you know, it's a, it's a Christian buzzword, and so uh, it's kind of hard to understand necessarily what community is. Um, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to answer a few questions. The first question we're going to answer is, what is community? So this Christian buzzword, what, is it, what does it mean? What is community? Uh, the second question we're going to answer is, what should 
uh, or I'm sorry, why, why should we be in community? So the first question answers, what is community? The second question answers, why should we be in community, right? And then the third question we're going to answer is, what does, uh, what does community at River Church look like? Uh, what would community look like at the church at River Church? How do we do community here at the river? So those are the three questions that we're going to be answer uh, be answering today. And it's kind of like a comprehensive, uh, big picture view, as you can tell from those questions uh, on the topic of community. So the first question that we have um, is. What is community? What is community? Now, community is defined as a group of people that live in close, uh, close proximity to one another. Now, I'm not going to ask us to all move on the same street together and live in the same neighborhood, although that would be super cool. Like, we could take each other cookies every day and brownies, and our kids can go running outside. It would just be a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm not going to ask us to do that. And that's not exactly what I mean when I, when I say community in, in terms of our context, right? Um, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is uh, what I would describe community as is, the, uh, is Christians doing life together, living life with one another. So we are uh, in each other's lives. We are, we are walking as Christians. We are walking towards Christ, but we are doing that alongside other people. We are in a community of other believers together. Simply put, I would describe it as our church life or doing life Together, So birthdays, if we got birthdays, we are going to each other's birthday parties. I had a birthday party and my wife, uh, it was a surprise party, it was actually really kind of crazy. She invited our gospel community and they came and it was us, an opportunity for us to do life together. It was really sweet. When people have babies, right, we are excited uh, that uh, we, our church is growing, right, even if it's through child birthing. But as, as, we have, as we have babies, you know, we're excited about the people that are having babies. We're going alongside them. We're taking them meals. We're praying over them. Uh, we are helping do whatever we can if they need us to go and help them clean. I mean, whatever it is, just, just supporting them uh, with uh, the, new, the, the new baby, right? That's crazy. I've had three kids, five and under, and it's a little bit chaotic when you have a baby. Um, but it's doing life together in that way. It's also through the hardships. Right? Sometimes we have hardships. We go through difficult situations in life. Like the loss of a job, the loss of a loved one. Right? Heartbreak, heartache, addiction. As we go through these hardships, we go through these hardships together give you an example of this type of community, not necessarily the hardships, but this type of community uh, I saw recently in our church, and I was super encouraged and super excited about it. And so some of y'all know this. I'm going to seminary. Uh, I am going, uh, and so with seminary, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of reading, a lot of all that stuff. And so one day I was <clears throat> trying, I got behind on my reading. Uh, I should have been uh, wherever I was supposed to be. I was not there, and so I was trying to catch up, right? I was reading, and I had to read a bunch of stuff, and so I'm at Denny's, and I am reading uh, for seminary, and, you know, I'm in the corner, I'm by myself, and I look out the window, and I'm like, there's Judah. <laughs> that dude goes to River Church. Oh, man, that's cool. Like, I guess Judah's coming, and then behind him, I see Victor, and I'm like, hey, that guy goes to River Church, too, and then I see Molly, and then I see... Um, I see the Modestos, right? I see Danelle, and I see Bea, and I see Allie, and I just see all of these people from River Church hanging out together. It was a Friday night. Like, if, if you're hanging out on a Friday night, you are not doing other things so you can hang out with these people. And I saw a community of Christians doing life together at Denny's. It was a beautiful, 
beautiful thing to see. We see this in the book of Acts. We see this in Acts chapter 2, right? When the Holy Spirit comes to the church in, uh, to the church at Pentecost, we see uh, the people gathering together for the apostles' teaching, for the fellowship, for the breaking of the bread, and the praying together. Community is the church doing life together. Now that we answered the what of community, we're going to answer the why. Why should we be in community? Why should we be in community? When answering the question why, it will help to see where community originated from. Where did it begin? Where did community come from? To help us answer this question, we're going to go back to the beginning, Genesis, Genesis chapters uh, 1, 2, and 3, the opening chapters of Genesis. And as you guys have uh, looked through Genesis, there's so much, especially those opening chapters, there are so many things there uh, that you could you know, chew on, that you could wrestle with, that you, can, that you can study, that as you go throughout the rest of Scripture, you start to see that those ideas that you saw in the earlier chapters of Genesis, the opening chapters of Genesis, you can start to see these things fully develop throughout the rest of Scripture. Right? We see them in Genesis in seed form, in a small uh, seed form of an idea or a concept. You see its earliest roots in Genesis. Right? And so one of the early uh, things that we can see in Genesis, one of the early uh, topics of study that we could find in Genesis is this idea of community. Now, as we've gone through Genesis, or as you read through the, the chapter 1, it's all about creation. On the first day, God created this. Second day, God created that. So on and so forth. He's creating everything through all the days. After every day, he says it was good. And then in uh, chapter 1, verses 26, is where we're going to be at. And this is where God creates man and says, <clears throat> Genesis 1, 26 and 27 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over, this, uh, over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So when God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So why community? Why community? When you look at this passage, the first thing that you might jump to and say, well, that's why we do community, is in chapter, I'm sorry, in verse 27, where it says, male and female, he created them. You see, okay, right there, that's it. That's where we are to look at, to see that God created us to be in community. But, but I would say it's not there. It's actually found in verse 26. Now, what's strange as we look at verse 26? What's strange about verse 26? Did you catch it? Do you see it? Verse 26. God says, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Who is God talking to? The answer is God is, God is talking to himself. God is in community. <clears throat> now this is an interesting passage because this is one of, again, this is one of the, the first references or the first hints that we see in Scripture uh, discussing the Holy 
Trinity, right? The Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, we don't have time to get into the doctrine of the Trinity this morning, but Scripture teaches that, that God is one and three, right? He is one in essence and three in person. Again, I'm not going to get into the doctrine of that, but what we can take from this, from the doctrine of the Trinity, what we can take from that is God has always existed, right? God the Father has always existed. God the Son has always existed. God the Holy Spirit has always existed, and they have existed eternally in community with one another, right? God, God has existed in community with himself for all of eternity. And so why community? The first answer to that question is because God is in community. Now to further answer that question, so, so the first answer is God is in community, right? He's, he, he has always been that way. <clears throat> All right. The second, to find the second answer, to further answer that question, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, uh, verses 15 through 18. The Lord God, Genesis 2, 15 to 18, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Then the Lord God said, catch this, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Again, it's, it's, it's in seed form, but if you look at this, right, alarms should be going off inside your head, right? Uh, as we read this, this text, right, something should be jumping off the page, like, this isn't what we just saw, right? Something is off here. Something doesn't make sense. It's like if you have kids, right? I have three kids, five, three, and one, and our house is loud, a lot of the time, right, kids are playing. They're not necessarily fine. They're just playing, and it gets loud, and it gets crazy. And as, an, as a parent, you learn, to, um, you learn to live with the noise. I was talking to a buddy of mine recently, and he was saying that he was like, man, I could watch TV shows. I could be reading a book while all the chaos is going, and I can focus in on what's on the TV, and despite all of this loud noise. Like, that's what being a parent is like and it's funny uh yeah so so that's what it's like being a parent you could just you could just hone in on that just, just despite all the distractions but then sometimes uh when, when things are around the house are starting to get quiet and you know it's not bedtime and things are quiet you're like wait a second something isn't right here right these alarms are going off the same thing should be happening to us as we read this passage. Now, what should be jumping off the page to us? It's the first time that God says it is not good. In every other account up to this point in Scripture, God is saying uh, he created something that was good. He created something that was good. This is the first time in Scripture that we see not good. Our eyes should be jolted right at those words. What was not good? It says, it is not good that the man should be alone. Not good that the man should be alone. So this leads us to our second answer to this question, why community? And it is that Adam and Eve were created to be in community. It says Adam and Eve, and that is true, but by implication, us ourselves, we were created to be in community. It was not good that Adam was alone. <clears throat> and you could even make the argument that, that Eve was created just so that Adam could not be alone, right? She was created already obligated to this community.
community and vice versa, right? When Adam was created, there was, even though it was, it was good that he was created and God created him in his image, it was not good, right? He was created with some sort of, uh, he was lacking in something and that was community. It was not good that he was alone. Right? He, they needed to be in community. And not only that, but God said, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and basically make a community of people. Again, it's in its seed form, but we were created to be in community. So review why community? Because God is in community and because we were created to be in community community. And the last thing I'll say about this, <clears throat> uh, I'm just going to say, show the slide and then I'll explain it because it, grammatically it doesn't sound right, but community always. Why community? Because community always. Now what does that mean? It means that community has always been, community is now, and community will always be. Community is always going to, to always has been, always is now, and always will be a part of life. Community always. We've already seen this, uh, this expressed in Genesis. And what I, what I want to do briefly right now is just hop through uh, different sections of Scripture, right? Beginning Old Testament, New Testament, and to show you guys that this is indeed a thing. Right? We have always been in community. We've always been created for community. Community is always going to be a thing. Again, we just talked about Genesis, and the count that we used was before the fall in the garden, right? In the Garden of Eden. Okay, in Leviticus. So this is after the fall. This is in the Old Testament when God calls the Israelites and calls them apart to be uh, his own people, uh, he gives them the Levitical law and he says, you shall be holy to me for I the Lord am holy and have separated you Israelites, not one person, but the Israelites, I have separated you from the peoples that you, plural, should be mine. A group of people. Jumping to the New Testament in Acts chapter 2, right? We've been talking about this on our community nights. Acts chapter 2, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. All who believed were together. What was significant about this? All. It's not just one person here. All who believed were what? Together in community, right? First Peter 2, 9 says, <clears throat> but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As we look at this, this sounds a lot, again, this is in the New Testament, right? This sounds a lot like what Moses told the Israelites in the Old Testament, you are a chosen race, a royal priest, a holy nation, a people, not a person, a people for his own possession. All right, so we have before the fall, before sin entered the world, we have Old Testament after sin, right? New Testament after sin. And now we have when it's all said and done and everything is restored back to um, back to perfection, right? It says, uh, Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4 says, And I heard a loud voice from the, from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them. And they will be his people, and God himself will be uh, with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall, the, the, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. But look what it says here. It says, He will dwell with them, and they will be His people. What does this sound like, guys? Well, this sounds like what we just read about in Genesis. 
in the garden. Right? Things are moving in that direction. It's just in, in this Revelation account, uh, there are a lot more people. Things are a lot more developed. But it's, it's, it's been the story, and it's going to be the story, guys. Community always. Now, that was just a sample that was just a sample. Uh, but if you look at Scripture, I mean, every book in the Bible is either written to a group of people or written to a person on how to instruct, how to uh, lead a group of people. Community always. The next question, so now we've answered uh, what is community. We answered uh, why. We've talked about why we should do community. The next question I want to answer is how do we do community at River Church? What does, what does community look like? Now again, I said this is a distinctive at River Church. I, I said this earlier. Um, it's one of our personality traits. It's something that we think is important. And so we want to be actively engaging in these community-type uh, events, these community, uh, f uh, these community fostering or these community um, promoting. Again, doing life together. We want to create uh, opportunities for us to do as much life together as possible. Why? Because we prize community. So what do we, uh, what are some of the ways that we do that here at River Church? Well, the first thing that we do, <clears throat> that we're doing right now, is our community nights. Okay, on Wednesday nights, we come together, we have table groups, and we sit with other people who are Christians from River Church. We sit with other people and we do life together, right? We have a study, we study God's Word, we eat we have fun. We laugh. Sometimes we, we uh, just joke with each, with each other. We build community. We build relationship with one another on Wednesday nights. Guys, if you have not come on Wednesday nights, it's a great opportunity to come and, 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 and get a taste of community. We are now going to be on Wednesday nights. We're going to be looking a little bit more. We've been talking about community. We're going to look a little bit more as to what it is to be um, a member uh, uh, of a church uh, and what, you know, how we engage, you know, in membership and all of those sorts of things, how to, how to become, uh, uh, yeah, just part of the community here at River Church. So if you haven't been, you order Chick-fil-A, we have a good time. We cover all the tables with, with, uh, with brown paper so you can color on it. It's just a lot of fun. I would strongly encourage you guys to come to that. But that's community nights on Wednesday nights. Another way we try to uh, foster community here at River Church is through our gospel communities. Okay, we have gospel communities. Uh, we had one uh, earlier. We had some earlier at the beginning of the year. Uh, we've taken a break from those, and we've been doing a church-wide community night. Uh, but we're going to get back to our gospel communities. Now, you may be familiar with these. You may have heard of these before as small groups, as um, man, community groups, as parish groups, as home groups, as cell groups. Call it whatever you want. <laughs> but that's, that, those groups are, are groups that we have here. We call them our gospel communities because the gospel is what brings that community of people together. And it is for the gospel that we gather and meet and, and whatever it is that we do, it's because of the gospel. And so <clears throat> we're going to be starting these up again uh, at the turn of the year um, in January. So if you guys are interested, again, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this more in the future, but since we're talking about community, I want to uh, talk to you guys about it. If you guys are interested in hosting a community, uh, a gospel community, meaning having people come to your house not necessarily leading it, but hosting it, uh, let me know, let Pastor Randy know. Um, we'd love to start <clears throat> organizing and trying to figure out, you know, what groups we're going to have and things of that nature. Uh, it's one of the things I'm working on right now. I'm super excited about it. But if you're interested in hosting a community group, maybe you're interested in leading a community group, maybe you're just interested in being a part of a community group, 
uh, whatever the case, let me know. I'd love to get you guys plugged in. <clears throat> uh, another way that we do community here is through our big days. We call them big days. Okay? And the idea in our big days is that we want to live community out loud. Meaning, we want uh, to live in community with our eyes intentionally focused outward. Okay, so, so, so what we do is we, 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 uh, we, we exist in community on these big days. We exist in community in ways that we invite the, the people who are not a part of River Church community, the people who don't necessarily go to church, who don't believe in God, who don't follow and walk with Jesus. We invite these people, our coworkers, our friends, our neighbors, we invite them in to see what community looks like. So these are big days. Uh, we had one a few months, uh, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, uh, last month, September, September 19th, I think it was, uh, we had our Back to Church Sunday. And so that was just a small, little, tiny example of it. But we had breakfast tacos here, and we invited people to come and to enjoy tacos and to come back to church, and we invited them into our community. Again, it was a small example, but it was an example of it. <clears throat> Another example of the, this, this, um, uh, our big days, uh, which this is a really cool story, um, we had uh, our icon, which is our high school and middle school ministry, we had us um, go to Get Air, which is a trampoline park, and I told the kids and I told the leaders, I said, hey guys, if you know someone who's like on the fringes or, 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 or is curious about the church, or, or maybe just people that you uh, associate with in, in your everyday lives, if you know people like that, and you're looking for ways to get them plugged in, invite them to this Get Air event. And so uh, it was really cool, actually. We had, on the day of our Get Air event, we had these three high school kids, middle school high school kids, who, to my knowledge, I don't believe they were going to church at the time, Right, they were friends with some of our friends here from River Church, and our friends said, "Hey, man, you should just come to this." And so they came, and and we went to the the trampoline park, and we jumped on trampolines, and after that we went to um, to raising canes, and we had some chicken together. It was a lot of fun. And those three high school kids that showed up to our our one of our big days with Icon, one of our ways to live community out loud. Those three kids that showed up are now consistently coming to church, praise God, which is awesome, and they are all uh, volunteering in some sort of ministry here at River Church. It was all volunteering. I was like, hey, man, you're going to do this. It was, hey, does anybody want to do this? And all three of them have, over the course since they've, they've been coming, they are interested in serving here at River Church. And so, man, that's such a great story, guys. It's a great story. Another way that we are going to be doing this, and that's, that's, the, that's the point, guys. I mean, as, as, as we do these community out louds, as we do these, these big days, the idea is that we do want to see people come to River Church. We do want to see people come be brought into uh, the fold, if you will, right? Be brought into the people of God. It's not so that River Church can just grow and, and be this gigantic church and and the cool church that everybody goes to. That's not the reason that we want to see these people walk through the doors. But as our church grows and more people come, there's, that's evidence to us that, that the Lord is drawing more and more people to himself. And God's kingdom is expanding. And so that's the goal. And so when I see three high school kids show up and then continue to get plugged in and continue to and volunteer to serve, to me that's great for River Church, but that's even greater for the kingdom of God. And that's, that's why we do this community out loud. And another way that we're going to be doing it here coming up this upcoming Saturday is with our Fall Fest. Right? We, we have a Fall Fest. It's like a, it's almost like a, trick-or-treat type deal that's going to be here. We're going to have all these stations. It's 
going to be a lot of fun, guys. But the idea behind these, uh, this fall fest, the idea behind these days is so that we can live community out loud and we can draw people from the outside in and say, hey, guys, look at, look at, look at community. We love you guys. We're going to love you guys and, and care for you guys in a way that, that maybe you've never experienced outside ever before. We're going to do that for you. So I'd invite you guys, man. Invite your friends. Invite the people that, that, that you've been wanting to invite to church, but you're a little bit uncomfortable. Man, invite them to our Fall Fest. We would love for them to come to that. Now, all this sounds great, right? We've talked about, you know, what community uh, is. We have talked about um, why we should do community. We just talked about how we do it here, and this is this. The answer to this question isn't an uh, exhaustive uh, list of things to do, but this is just what we do. But we've talked about that. The next question I want to answer, or I want to point out, it's not a question, but the problem is, is we don't want community. We don't want it. I don't want it. You don't want it. We don't want community. We don't want any part of it. <clears throat> Let's return back to Genesis. We're now in Genesis 3. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was there with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9 but the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? Where are you? These are some of the most haunting words in Scripture. These are some of the most haunting words in Scripture. God telling Adam, asking him the question, where are you? And, and this question is not questioning God's, uh, God's just his knowledge. It's not, like it's, it's, it's not questioning his sovereignty. He, he knows exactly where Adam is. He's not like, hey, Adam, you know, I, I know you were just right here, and, and I can't seem to find you. It's not what he's saying right now. Okay, God knows exactly where he, Adam, is. But up to this point, they have existed in community, right, uh, uh, with each other, Adam and Eve, and with God. And at this moment, when he and Adam ate of the fruit, that relationship that they had with God, that community that they existed with God was broken. And God knows this. And to signify this, to, to highlight this, he tells Adam, Adam, where are you? Where are you? 
My question to us this morning, to, to my question this morning, or our question that we should be wrestling with is, is, is where are you? Where am I? Where are we? Are you avoiding church community? Right? Are, are, are you like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go uh, to church. I'm just going to stay home. I'm going to chill. You know, it's Monday Night Football. I'm going to stay here instead. Right? You're getting that phone call like, man, I'm not trying to answer the call. I don't want to go. I want to I I avoid that situation. Are you avoiding community? Are, are you maybe like me? who's an introvert, right? You know, my Myers-Briggs test, my personality test, my Enneagram says that, you know, I, I, I can deal with people, but I should be by myself more often. Are you listening to those things as opposed to what Scripture calls us to be? Maybe it's something a little bit more uh, serious. Maybe you're living a lifestyle that you're just afraid of what people would think if they, they knew the real you. you you're, just, you're just afraid that if people got too close, they would, they would know too much, and, and you don't want people to know what's going on on the inside. You want to keep people at a distance. I don't want people to get into my business. Maybe that's, maybe that's what you're thinking. Whatever the reason is, Christ calls us back to himself and back into community. At the end of this chapter, in Genesis chapter Three, we see that Adam and Eve are trying, I mean, we saw it in this passage right now, that they're trying to cover themselves. They're trying to do good works to appease God. They cover themselves with, with fig leaves, right, uh, to try and, and, and make themselves look right before God. And the beautiful thing about this Genesis 3 passage is we see that God covers them. He covers them with, with, uh, with, with skins. And this is the first recorded death in Scripture. There was something had to die in order for Adam and Eve to be covered. It wasn't their works. It was God sacrificing something to comfort them. Early picture here, guys, but this is uh, an image of the sacrifice of Jesus for us. Guys, wherever you are at, however you are pushing back, however you are resisting community, right? We, we all are there. Whatever it is that maybe you're ashamed of or, or, or you're, you're pulling away from the flock or maybe you're not even a Christian and you don't even want to try and get too close, Jesus says, I have died for your sin. Come. Come to me. If you are weak, if you are burdened, come. I will give you rest. You can rest with me. You can rest in community. It's not based on your works. It's based on my works. Come. Come back to me. That's what Christ calls us to. That's what we were created for. Right, so much like, much like my phone that, you know, all it is now is a paperweight. All it does is sit on my, on my bookshelf. Let's not be like that. Let's be who Christ has called us to be. Let's be who he has created us to be. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for community. We thank you for do, uh, the ability to, to do life with one another in community, to pursue you alongside other Christians. Lord, we thank you for that, just that blessing. All right, sometimes as Christians, Lord, we take that for granted as, as people living in America where there is, seems to be community and people everywhere, Lord. 
we thank you for the ability to gather and to walk and to do life alongside other believers, Lord. Lord, I pray for us. I pray over our hearts. I pray um, that as we may be resistant to community, Lord, I pray that, that you just knock down those walls and knock down those barriers, Lord, and, and bring us in, Lord. We love you, Jesus, and we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.